So I was really nervous about doing this, um, trying out a new-ish in Fennelly course and um, sharing my results with you guys. So this could actually be a nightmare, but I have committed to myself that no matter how my t sketch turns out, I am going to share it with you guys because the point of the video is to check out Ian Fennelly's new-ish beginner's course and not how well I can do it. So uh, anyway, yeah, a bit nervous, but um, bear with me and let's see how this goes. Okay, who is Ian Fennelly? I think if you are watching this channel, which was previously called Urban Sketching World, now called Tario Sketchy Adventures, but still predominantly deals with urban sketching, I think you probably know who this dude is. But just in case you don't, Ian is a total mega dude, as my friend Jim would say, from just outside of Liverpool in the UK. So yeah, he has that awesome Liverpudlian accent. Hi guys! And as you can see, he is a fantastic artist and urban sketcher. Here's some of, this, some of his work on the screen right now. And I just love, love, love his work so much. And I've been a huge fan of Ian's for years now. And he has a book of his sketches, which you can buy over via um, Studio 56, which sadly I don't have yet. But I need to rectify that very soon, I think. And he's got multiple courses and workshops available online, mostly as a result of the COVID pandemic. He used to seem to just mainly do in-person workshops, but as a result of the pandemic, he's got a lot more content online, which is really cool. He's got quite a few workshops lined up for 2022, in-person workshops across the world. They're mainly through companies such like Studio 56 and French Fusion Travel. So do make sure you check those out. And uh, yeah, take me with you. <laughs> so yeah, go check out his website for more details on all of that stuff. Anyway, so the course. Right. So I was asked if I want to check out Ian's new-ish Urban Sketches course for beginners. And of course, I said yes. I haven't actually taken any of Ian's courses before, although I am aware of his process and teaching style from sort of a mixture of what I've seen on YouTube, as well as his segment that he taught in Sketchbook School's Urban Sketching course. In this beginner's course, he sets aside his, his Tombow markers, which he's very well known for using and starting off with and that kind of thing. And he starts from the very start. He starts from a pencil sketch and he even shows you the location scouting. He shows that element of it and what he looks for in a scene, which I think is awesome. It's really useful information. And he also talks about mapping out the sketch. He shows an on himself doing the on location sketch just in pencil. And then he moves into his studio and you start from pencil there. So it's really like a much, as far as I'm aware, it's like a slower process or it's, you know, it's definitely broken down step by step a bit more so of course you know he makes it look completely effortless and explains it all beautifully but it's uh, one thing watching it and nodding along and thinking mm -hmm, yep that seems straightforward enough and another thing putting pen to paper and getting on with it yourself now word of advice and I actually needed to hear this as much as anyone else the point of this all is not to copy Ian and turn out a sketch that looks identical to Ian's. So typically, I only really thought about this after I had tried to copy Ian's sketch. So from making that mistake, though, I realised actually the point is to A, learn a process or what, you know, understand his process for making a sketch and B, to sort of invoke the spirit of Ian's approach to sketching. So you may absorb some of his techniques such as his unique, what I think is unique, approach to using watercolour paint. I had no idea he threw white into the mix. That's really unusual, but super cool. And, you know, his use of hatching to add tone at the end. And you may incorporate these techniques into your own way of sketching, but because you're doing them, they're naturally going to turn out differently. But, revelation, that's okay. And in fact, it's more than okay. It's actually the entire point of doing this. Quick side note, guys, if you do like the, these videos that I'm making, aside from the obvious instruction of subscribing, thumbs up and all that stuff, 
Do you remember to actually click the notification bell? Because with so many videos being published every single minute, it's really easy for the ones that I publish to get lost in the noise. And so if you're keen to carry on seeing my videos, then the bell will help you not lose them. And, or, join my mailing list. I pretty much always let you know via email what's going on over you, on YouTube, um, you know, as well as other super cool, interesting things, obviously. So, anyway, back to the video. So, here I am doing my best to invoke Ian's spirit. That makes him sound like he's dead and I'm trying to commune with him, but that's... <laughs> you know what I mean. Anyway, I'm also trying and forgetting to not just copy him. It probably helped me a little bit that I didn't have the exact uh, colour, one of the colours he's using, so transparent orange. I don't have that, so the closest thing I thought I had was Windsor orange, but it turns out that was a bit too opaque, really. So, you know, it kind of covers up the pen lines a bit too much. Wasn't the best. Uh, it's also a bit yellower than what Ian is using, so it made it look a bit weird, but that's fine. It doesn't matter. And luckily, I did randomly actually happen to have the cobalt turquoise, turquoise that he's using, which is a bit strange, but I actually bought it back in 2018 for the purposes of sketching things in Iran. Because as you may know or have seen, there's a lot of turquoise in Iran. So yeah. And then I found in my mongrel set, after referring back to some swatches in an old sketchbook, that I do actually have Prussian blue as well, which was handy. So I found that. And then I also do have a pan of white in my Winsor & Newton Cotman set from when I started out. So that was there. But to be honest, I basically forgot to use that during the sketch at all because it just seems so counterintuitive. I, yeah, anyway. Um, the watercolour stage is definitely the most stressful in terms of trying to do it and sort of watch Ian at the same time because, of course... I wasn't trying to copy exactly what he was doing. <laughs> it's stressful because it's 30 degrees Celsius here right now. So it's very warm. It's very dry. And the paint was just drying really quick. Plus, I actually think this Canson paper that I'm using just sucks the water up like a sponge. It doesn't leave you much time to work into existing washes that you put down. And yes, I did use the word stressful and watercolour in the same sentence. I personally believe watercolour is the most stressful medium of them all, but you probably know that already anyway. <laughs> uh, so I progressed through the stages, finishing with the hatching that Ian does, and I definitely need to work on this. Mine is nowhere near as neat or consistent like his. And I didn't take Ian's advice and practice on a separate piece of paper before just doing it on the sketch. I finished Ian's process but I wanted to try and go a bit further with it so I feel like when I downloaded Ian's final sketch there was some of his trademark grey marker values on there but of course I could be totally wrong about that but that was just what my eye was seeing so I thought hmm I'm actually going to crack out my secret weapons for adding contrast which some of you know if you've seen the video I'm showing on the screen right now are my Faber Castell Pit Artist Pens. So I added some subtle areas with the very lightest grey tone I had just to see if it would just add a little something. And, as usual, I looked at the sketch and thought, hmm, it's not as good as I hoped it would be. <laughs> I then walked away from it for a few hours and I came back later and then I actually didn't hate it. So... Yay! <laughs> That's a win, I think. So none of that is the point, of course. The point was to share a little inside look at Ian's New Beginners course. I will never not love anything Ian does, but I really did enjoy trying out Module 1 of this Beginners course. It pushed me in all kinds of new directions and ways of thinking and ways of working with materials that I'm already familiar with you know, ways of working with them in different ways. So whether you're new or experienced, I think there's just a lot you can learn from Ian's unique and unusual way of sketching. And I really can't wait to dig into the next three modules, actually. I've peeked ahead and I can see in module four, he does actually crack out those famous Tombow markers right at the end. So I'm looking forward to checking that part out. Um, so yeah, anyway, I hope this has been useful, guys. I've got the link to Ian's beginner's course below in the description. It is an affiliate link, so I might get a couple of quid. Well, 
hopefully I will get a couple of quid if you sign up. Anyway, um, let me know, would you like to see me try and tackle any of the other modules in this course? So here's what they look like up on the screen. So yeah, let me know in the comments below if you'd find it interesting to see me have a crack at those. Otherwise, I shall see you in the next video.